Hey and moi, if that said right, I'm going to do a video on my Scandinavian respirators because people have been saying can you do a video on your like Finnish respirators or your Swedish respirators in the collection. The issue is that my Swedish collection and my Finnish collection on their own are so small I don't think they really warrant a collection video. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lump all of Scandinavia in together and I'm going to include that as Denmark, Norway, Sweden and Finland. I don't have any actual Danish or Norwegian gas masks, so this is going to simply just be Sweden and Finland. So um, let's start off with Sweden, we'll work um, west to east, and we're going to look first at the Falk gas mask uh, respirator, and I think Type 32 is its official name. Um, so this one's easy to see, 1955, I guess size 3. Now, so basically, what this was is was a cheap civilian respirator the Swedes came up with um, during the Cold War for basically civil defence. Uh, they had this style mask before it in World War II where it was very similar to the British one. This one is still very similar to the British civilian respirator. So when you get it, it comes sealed in a bag. If you want to see more about this mask, watch the video I actually did on this very specific mask. But basically it came with some instructions and that uh, and some anti-fouling paste. But this is the mask itself. Now, obviously, do not use the filter of this. A filter made from the 1950s probably has asbestos in. And regardless, due to the age of the filter, the insides have probably worn down quite a lot and turned to dust. So the mask itself is very simple. Not the most comfortable of masks. Uh, you can see there it says Type 32 Golmeron or something. Golmeron. Um, and it says GP5544 on that side of it. So basically this is a very simple mask. Um, they've done the same thing as the British World War II masks where, the civilian masks at least, where they made the filters with the actual intake valve on the filter itself, not in the mask, and then the mask is literally just taped. So the mask without the filter on is just literally hollow at that end and then they tape the filters on which is a cheap way of doing it I guess. Now I'm going to hold my breath and put it on very briefly for you so you can see it. Um, obviously as I've said I'm holding my breath because sometimes I've done this I've made it very obvious I'm holding my breath and people are like oh my god you put on an asbestos gas mask. You said never to wear asbestos gas masks. Well yeah because as said I'm holding my breath. Right okay ready. So that's the mask on. It doesn't actually have an exhale valve, so it just inflates around my face. Let's get that off. So yeah, the mask itself doesn't have an exhale valve. Um, it's very primitive. You inhale through the filter, you breathe out until it balloons up around your face enough that the air gets out. Uh, very primitive and basic. But it, yeah, it would save your life. So what I assume would be in this filter it's your particulate layer at the front which probably has asbestos in it. If it's not pure asbestos it will be asbestos woven with something else. Then you have a big canister of charcoal. Uh, the charcoal probably goes from that ridge there all the way to the back with another little particle layer on so the charcoal can't get out. And that would obviously be your main absorption layer. Now I think they made quite a few variants of this. Uh, what is surprisingly good on these is those cheap bits of plastic there, or I assume this plastic, is very um, good you know very clear plastic which surprised me on something so cheap as this but yeah these were basically designed as um, kind of we need to make masks civilians really cheap I don't actually think that's even taped on I think this is um, I'm not gonna take it off for this video but I think this is just kind of like a really strong elastic band that holds this all together but anyway the point was make these for civil defense use never needed as the Cold War never went hot and chemical weapons weren't used but uh, this is one of those interesting curiosities of like, you know, the really cheap civilian masks that were made, uh, thankfully not needed, but as a result you can buy them sealed in a tub, you know, with all the contents in there for very cheaply now, and they're great little collector's items, but as I said, don't breathe through them. Now for one of my favourite respirators in my collection, this is the Forshida F2A4. Now, there's two variants of the Fushida F2 as far as I'm aware. There's the normal F2, which has a drinking tube on, and you can put the filter on either side. On this one, it just goes on this side, the left cheek. 
Um, and there's the A4, which is this one, which is the civilian version where they took off the drinking tube and only had the um, filter intake on this side. So this is either for civilians or export. Now, one thing I mentioned when I did a video of this, uh, I'll find the date on it. There, there we go, it says 94 at the bottom there. Um, as far as I'm aware, these masks are made during the early 90s. I think it was actually called something like the Skied Mask 90 um, program when these are made. And as far as I'm aware, I've probably horribly butchered the pronunciation of that, but as far as I'm aware, like Skied Mask, whatever it is, is Swedish for like gas mask or respirator. Uh, so the 90 bit implies it was like, you know, from the 90s, the program modernization. The military mask Sweden had before these was a Finnish, well, not the Finnish, but like the American M9 um, clone. I think they might have called that the M51, the Swedish M51. But regardless, when I get to the Finnish mask, it will look very similar to that. But, so these, you know, a truly modernised mask. And obviously, what Sweden did, and I don't blame them at all, because it's clearly your best option ever, uh, they looked at the time at all the different masks that are out there and said, we need to come up with a mask that's really good. They looked at the Avon S10 very clearly. You can see it's got a lot of S10 elements to this. The pretty much the only difference is they use these more triangular lenses like soft triangles rather than actually using the um, you know circular more circular lenses the S10 has but other than that it is literally an S10 um, in terms of how it's all set up on the inside um, you know how it all works like with the S10 it doesn't really have a proper voice diaphragm what it's got is an XL valve at the front and then a system there that's designed to amplify the XL valve slightly um, but yeah but this mask is absurdly comfortable, it has a very good um, head strap as you can see there, it's quite big. Um, six straps, the easy to adjust elasticated strap, so let me put this on. Okay, so basically, with this mask, do up the bottom two straps. Do up the middle two straps. Do up the top two straps. And this mask is really comfortable, absurdly comfortable. You see, it makes an airtight seal. As I was saying, the problem is, these are from the 90s, but lots of surplus sellers got these in a while ago when I bought mine. And they all said, these are like brand new modern Swedish military gas masks. Uh, no, they're not. They're, unless there are a new batch and nobody's ever got those who's ordered them. It seems that all of them are from the 90s. Uh, they've now been sold on the surplus market, but lots of surplus sellers for some reason think they are brand new masks made the other day because they've not looked at the date stamps on them. That you know, are physically imprinted on the rubber that you can check. But regardless, I don't know what kind of plastic this is. I don't know if it's polycarbonate, so I don't know how strong it is, but it seems all right, tapping it. Obviously don't shoot it with a BB gun because you might ruin a really good mask. But, um. Yeah, very comfortable, I said. This makes an amazing facial fit for me, personally. Um, if you like masks like the S10, you'll definitely like this. It's got all the good points of an S10. Slightly better, in my opinion, uh, eyepieces, although I haven't tried using a scope uh, with these, so I don't know how well it is good for shooting in. But yeah, as I said, you know, they looked at the S10 and clearly used that as the main design influence on this mask. So that's the reason why, really, it's so good. Um... So yep, yeah, can't say anything bad about this mask really. Uh, if I see the military one cheap at some point, I'll pick up the military variant as well. But these are really, really good masks. Very comfortable, good field of view. Take 40mm NATO filters, you know, comfortable straps, easy to do with straps, you know, where you can just do that to tighten, that to loosen. So, very, very competent respirator. If all respirators like this, you know, it'd be great, but sadly they're not all as good as this, are they? But there we go, so that's the Skid Mask 90, whatever it's called, or the Forshida F2 A4 to, um, you know, most of us. Now for a look at what I think is called the Finnish M39, but it was basically the Finnish World War II civilian respirator. So it's in this little shoestring box. here we go so the instructions are both in Finnish and Swedish uh, in there because I did get some of my subscribers tell me that and apparently that was because in lots of areas of Finland at the time lots of people spoke Swedish so you've got this rubber hood mask in the box put that down a second um, you've also got the filter which is obviously probably riddled with asbestos and a carry satchel 
Uh, I've never bothered actually getting the carry satchel properly out. Um, the carry satchel does have some like anti-dim paste in it that's long since dried up. Um, so there's the filter. I'm obviously not going to open this filter because it's got asbestos in because it's not a World War II filter. Uh, there's also, I think this was anti-dim paste in here that's long since dried up as well. Um, but yeah. This is a very competently made mask, or it is very high quality for a civilian World War II mask. So let's have a look at the mask. So basically, this is an improved version of the German VM-37 respirator. The face piece itself and hood is very similar to the VM-37. But what they've done with this mask is it's got a proper plastic um, assembly on it. So you'll see there that it's got the screw thread for the filter intake um, and the valves. Uh, and it's got the uh, plastic kind of spring exhale valve thing there. Now, I can see directly out of this if I look through it. So I assume that it has some sort of celluloid type stuff there that's see-through. Uh, if you want to see the inside of the mask... There we go. It's probably quite hard to. Yeah, you're not going to see much. But and it's got like an adjustment strap there, which I guess you do the button up. Right. What I'm interested to see is how close the filter was back in the day to modern 40 millimeter NATO. So let's just see. I'm obviously not going to force this if it's not going to turn because it's an old mask, but. Right, so there we go, the filter is on, let's see if it's airtight. With a lot of old masks I wouldn't do this with them because I don't want to damage them, but these for some reason have started turning up often for like less than 30 quid with the box and all the accessories now. I guess loads of them are made and recently lots of stashes of them have turned up. Right, so that's the mask on. Uh, let's do a filter check. That seems to pressurise. Now, because this seems to work for this video, what I'm quite tempted to do actually is uh, do a respirator test of this at some point. Out of interest, you can do a quick one now. Will this uh, let me smell anything? But as you can see, this is a pretty good civilian mask, isn't it, for uh, you know World War II period? Well, much better than uh, like the British and the Swedish civilian masks were. Well, I'm not smelling the banana oil, so perhaps my mask from 1939 still works, and maybe this was a 40mm NATO thread, or a thread close enough to a NATO thread, because this normalised Polish filter fits on it, from back then. Now, obviously, you would need to use anti-dim paste on this if you intended to have it on for a long period, because the mask is slowly fogging up, where obviously the exhale valve doesn't allow enough air out at once. But let's get this back off. So yeah, very impressive. I can smell the banana oil now, I've taken it off, so... I think this may still work, which means I will definitely want to do a test with this now. Um, but yeah, so, because I think the, um... It says VS-38 there, so... Whether or not its actually official name was the VS-38, because I've always thought it was called something like the M-39 mask, but... Um... Uh, some stamps there. Yeah, this one was made in 1939. So it says KTOY Para there. 1939-32. So, again, it's 32 the size. Is that a model thing? Some faded stamps there I can't read. But yeah, uh, very impressed that this actually still works. That's really has impressed me. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to do a test of this. But yeah, uh, they're called helmet masks, masks like this that have the hood and yeah it seems this Finnish one um, so I know people have shown me before I think it was Estonian ones or other Baltic states also had very similar masks to this I assume they bought a production license from Nazi Germany for the VM37 then improved them by putting an intake and exhale valve on them uh, but as you can see for a World War II civilian mask this is really competent it's actually better than most World War II military masks in my opinion because you've got an exhale valve and I'm assuming when I watch the video back the uh, voice thing on this will actually be loud enough that it will maybe be understandable what I'm saying. Okay, now for a mask you know I all love. This is the Finnish M61 variant 2 or version 2 
and uh, these are mostly made by Nokia. Uh, this basically, as I was saying, the American M9 was a very popular mask. Finland bought a production license and made even better versions of the M9 than America did. Um, Sweden, when they had what I think was called the M51, it would have been very similar to this, basically the domestic Swedish version. The Finns, though, put very good straps on these. Uh, they also put a proper peripheral seal around the outside of the mask, which is kind of amazing. Um, and therefore, the, the, these versions of the M9, called the M61s, were better than the American M9s. So, they're also kind of one of the best masks until, um, you know, the British S6 is out and some of those other masks. So, what you kind of have with this is a mask that um, worked absurdly well for the time period it was made for. Um, obviously, comedically big nose. Why does the mask have a big nose? It's so the Tissot tubes can run to each eye through the nose piece and the oral nasal cup sits in there. So anyway, let's look at this one. So that's the mask on, it's probably quite muffled. So it has a 60mm NATO filter intake as you can see there. And 60mm NATO was the standard NATO size before they went to 40mm NATO. A lot of people have said to me, wouldn't 60mm NATO let more air through? In theory, yes, but lots of 60mm NATO filters had a very small intake hole on that side of the filter. So what it actually meant is that the air was still restricted by the smallest point it could go through. What you've got here is the rubber thing that lets you change the direction your exhale goes in, if you want to do that for some reason. Otherwise that just covers the exhale valve that's underneath it. But yeah, very comfortable, uh, surprisingly comfortable. Obviously it's got a big nose that people find really funny for some reason. But um, the actual mask, you know, is really, really good for what it is. Um, you know. I can't fault this mask at all. Uh, this is one of those masks where if um, I put a 60 to 40 millimeter filter converter on it and a modern filter, I'd very happily actually use this in a chemical attack because it still works perfectly and it's a very, very good mask. So, uh during, I think it was the 90s, Finland replaced the M61s with a mask called the M95, which I don't have, um, it's a Scott mask. Apparently they were very good. But uh, what they had is, they had a later gen of this that apparently didn't see much use because it was, you know, to replace the M61 V2s. This is the M61 V3. And this is the exact same mask, except for where the exhale valve was on the other one, They've um, basically now put a plastic assembly on that has a metal voice diaphragm in it and an exhale valve there. So this is exactly the same as the other mask and as you can see on this one, it says Nokia. For the people who are interested in it being a Nokia mask. So my only issue with this thing is that the voice diaphragm isn't the best voice diaphragm in the world. Um, the story, as you know, I've said in other videos, goes that when I first got this, the Finnish defence tower symbol was upside down. So I got my screwdriver, took that off, put it back on. It turns out after that that it broke the airtight seal of the voice diaphragm. Um, I've had to do a couple of repair jobs on this now, because it seems eventually when the glue I keep putting on it dries out, the voice diaphragm lets in air again. But I'll just demonstrate it for you. It seems this one is made out of slightly thinner rubber than the M61 V2. I don't know if that was a per factory thing, or per, per certain year, or for each model of mask, but... Okay, here we go, so that's this one on. So, pop my ear so it's pressurising the right, but yeah, as said, it's got a voice diaphragm on. When these voice diaphragms are working, I imagine they are the better version of the mask. Um, but as said, that is obviously a weak point of the mask, because if you take the cover off, you might accidentally break your voice diaphragm. But overall, yes, these are very good masks. As I said, they look a bit comical and big, but they, um, especially with the nose on it. But, you know, it has an oral nasal cup in it, it has Tissot tubes in it. And the mask doesn't fog up, even without anti-dim paste on. It's lightweight, it's comfortable. 
These are actually because of how big the masks are, a lot more comfortable than some of the even more modern masks some nations use. The M9 was a really good mask when it was designed. Um, so let's get this one off. So yeah, the M9's uh, series was very good. Obviously the Finnish M61's, in my opinion, are the best of the M9's. Um, the Serbian M2 is also very good. That's basically where Serbia, um, Yugoslavia previously made M9 copies, which they called the M1 mask. Um, and then at some point during the Yugoslav period, or the breakup of Yugoslav period, either Yugoslavia or Serbia, depending on which country you're calling it at that point, um, then decided they were going to make a scaled down uh, M9 that took 40mm filters. And then they did a version as well that had the same kind of voice diaphragm and XL valve on as a later version again. So they were very good as well. But anyway, that's my Scandinavian gas masks. As I said, there's not loads in this video. There were two Swedish masks and three Finnish masks. That's a total of five masks. Not a very impressive collection, but there you go. But what impressed me the most was that that Finnish World War II mask still seems to make an airtight seal. And it seems it works with 40mm modern filters. So... I'm definitely going to have to film a video of that at some point and do um, a proper test of that because if that still works that means I've got a mask from 1939 that still actually works you know and I've said that before it's the thing that really annoys me is when people say oh no if if your masks past five or ten years old it's it's not gonna work <laughs> that thing seems like it's gonna work <laughs>